Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I do my molds for small parts. So what you need for this tutorial is some gray air dry clay, some Lego bricks, some glue sticks. Uh, I use the uh, high, high or low temp melt and some toothpicks. You'll need some more stuff later on. Now what I've done here is I've uh, made the base for my mold. I put some flat tiles on the top there and that's going to help me uh, smooth out my first layer of clay to get the first half of my cast done. So now I just hack off a hunk of the clay here. Roughly the size of whatever mold you're going to be making just for the base. You want it to be fill the that cavity up completely and smoothly. Here I am, I'm just rolling it out. We'll speed it up for time's sake here. Just press it in there and then grab something to roll it with. I use an old marker and that's fine. Uh, trimmed it off and uh, added a little bit more just to fill it out and fill up all the gaps. And you can see it's pretty flush right there. Nice and smooth. Right, here's the two bits I'm going to be casting. Uh, one's a custom combi flamer that I scratch built. Uh, the other one is a custom brick base. Now what you want to do is uh, this is what's going to determine your mold line when you finish the model. So you want to sink this down about 50% or if you have an original mold line on the piece that you're casting you want to kind of go down to that mold line so that you have an identical one and not an extra one on top of that. Then we uh, take a piece of our toothpick here and we're just going to cut a length off to cut a channel for our resin to flow out of when we do eventually sit down to cast this. You also want to try to attach it to a part where it's going to be easy to clean up the the resin overflow from that. Uh, I picked a flat spot, uh, spot on the back of the gun. That seems to work out perfect. And you want to sink that down about halfway to into the mold. Okay, now we're going to take uh, the end of a, one of our paintbrushes, I just have a GW paintbrush here, and just wet the end and uh, sink it in. This is going to key the mold so that it'll have like kind of two locking pins when the two halves go together that'll connect the mold pieces. It helps if your brush is really wet on the end too, because it won't stick to the clay. And there we have it, there's our mold pretty much ready for the first half of the mold. And then we take off all these flat tiles. And then we're going to build up a wall around there, kind of a cavity for our, our mold half to be poured into. The nice thing about Legos is you can build a plunger that fits perfectly in there. And this is going to help because we're when we're doing this we want pressure as well as the heat from the glue sticks. We want to be able to squeeze it all into that mold. So here we go, we're just going to speed right through and put together our second one for our base. Now most of this stuff I've, I've managed to pick up from a local dollar store, so the, the end cost of this project is you're literally paying pennies per casting when you do do this this way. It is a little cheaper. Um, I have noticed some issues and we'll get to them later or whatever with some of the bits that I've cast, but there's some ways around that. Now with this piece, because the mold line on a base is at the very bottom, you don't want to sink it down, you just want to set it on top of that clay. You probably don't need to cast a, a second half to the mold, but I find this way you get a perfectly smooth bottom and then your figures will stand perfectly flat. You don't have to sand the bottom down afterwards. Same thing, we key our mold. And then we add a little flow channel with a piece of toothpick again. Building up our walls again. Okay, now we have our uh, mold and our plunger again for this one. It's important that you make a duplicate mold and then you can cast like a couple of these at a time. 
Now we're going to take our glue sticks and uh, clamp, and we're going to take those over to the table, and there'll be some more supplies there. So get a little saucepan. Um, don't use your wife's good one or your mom's good one. Uh, the glue sticks will just destroy it. They'll stick to the sides and drive you nuts. There's our two molds. Our plungers have everything handy that you're going to need to do this because once you pull this out, it's going to set quick. And a clamp. This will help us apply pressure to the mold when we're ready to squeeze the, the glue in. Now, we, uh, with these glue sticks, I find three works perfectly for each mold half. Uh, and we've got some popsicle sticks here, and those will help us kind of move things around. Now, I, I've got hands that can handle this. I, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it, please do not like stick your hands in boiling water. Uh, <laughs> not a good idea. Um, the glue does have kind of a putty consistency when you do this, and it's it's not terribly hot, but uh, for some people, it, especially kids out there, like get your parents to help you, please. Okay, uh, I'm just twisting the ends together, the three glue sticks. What we're doing is we're going to form this into one giant blob of... Of, of glue and it's going to kind of come out like a putty when it's done. It'll be like a, a silly putty or a kneadable putty. And this takes a little while. Fast forward and work our way through. You can see I'm folding it over and slowly working it into a ball. I keep it on a low boil too. It doesn't need to be overboiled. Um, I've tried some other methods with this. I, I even tried actually melting the glue down completely in a pot on its own. And you find out why it's called glue. Uh, I, I literally lost a couple of bits because I, I glued the two molds completely together and lost my bit in a rubberized silicone chunk. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just keeping the glue from touching the sides of the pan. It will float on the surface of the water, but trust me, if it touches the side of that pan, it's just going to stick there. It's going to drive you nuts. The water does add, act like a barrier. It is like green stuff that way. It won't stick to things if there's water on it, which is kind of why I use this method instead of just melting the glue down. And we roll it out. And what we're doing is um, we want to go until there's no hard lumps in there. We want a 100% soft consistency. Any hard lumps won't press down into the form when you're done. So kind of an even temperature, doesn't have to be super hot, just enough that it's going to flow. Okay, we take our blob out, it seems to be ready. Drop it in the mold, press it down really quick because once this gets in there, it's going to start cooling right away. Get your form in and apply pressure with your hands. Just get it started and you can see the pressure's quite a bit. It actually started pushing the bricks out. So we'll work it in there as much as possible. Okay, when we get that in there, then we grab our clamp, get it as close to center as you can, because if it tilts to one side or the other, it's going to not evenly disperse the glue into the, the, the mold that you've made. And then once that's all done, uh, what I usually do is I just throw it in the freezer for about 10 minutes while I'm doing the next mold. Okay, now this was a half of a mold that I've already cast, and the nice thing is about this process is you can just reuse these bits. So I toss it back in the water, and same thing through magic of time lapse here, we've sped it up and got it to the point where it's ready to drop in. Drop her in the mold, and press our form down in, and clamp it. I actually find that after you've reused the mold, it kind of sticks better. So here's what it looks like when you pull the walls off. You've got kind of a nice translucent brick and your bits kind of stuck to it. Now don't just go ripping it out right off the bat. You want to take your time with this, but uh, just for time's sake, I figured I'd show you guys what it looks like. And you can see our mold channel there from the toothpick and there's my combi flamber sitting in there. Okay, back to the desk here. We've got our half, and now we're getting ready for the next stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the other one with the base and see how it turned out. Yeah, you can see it actually pulled the filler out of the bottom of the base that I had done because I filled it so that it would be 100% flat. Now, I'm gently bending the edges here. Um, you can use a sculpting tool or anything to slowly pry it out. You don't want to scrape the sides of the, the rubber mold that you've made. So just be gentle, take your time, get it out. It will pop out. Like This stuff does not stick too bad when it's wet. Okay, and then just put your bit to the side because you're going to need that again in a few minutes. Take our mold pieces and get them out of the way, and then we'll pry out the combi flamer here. 
especially with the small bits, really take your time prying them up. You don't want to break anything because you do need this intact because it's going to be needed for the other half. And there we go. Check your molds at this point too. Like, I mean, if there was something wrong, you didn't get them right, put them back in, redo the whole thing. Uh, it just takes you a couple of minutes to do this, so you might as well. And then you get a perfect mold because these will last for literally 10 or 20 casts. Okay, now I'm just clearing up the flash that's around the edge here just so it'll fit back into the Lego bricks. Um, cut away from yourself, people. I, I'm, I'm dumb that way. I, I just grew up cutting this way. I've never trimmed myself, but, you know, for safety's sake, cut away. Okay, we've got our two mold halves all cleaned up, ready to go. Now what we're going to do is going to realign everything. Now, it's kind of tricky. You want to make sure that these go back the exact same way they came out. Take your time, figure it out, get it in there. They should fit really snug once they go in. Okay, now we've got that, we press it back into our mold. We've cleaned the clay out, obviously, and now we just put this at the bottom instead of the clay. Build our wall back up around it. And I believe I had forgotten an important stage at this point. Yes, I did. Uh, we got to put back in our key, or not our key, sorry, our, our mold ejection port there. So we put that toothpick back in. Now, I use an old toothbrush to apply this. It seems to be the easiest way because it smooths it out. But a little bit of Vaseline. This works perfectly. Petroleum jelly, whatever you've got, this this works really well. I, I've tried oils, uh, mineral oil, and it just it, the glue seems to melt that down and stick to each other that way. The, the petroleum jelly is the best way to go. And we just scrub it on the mold. You don't want any lumps. You want to get this nice and smooth because any lumps will actually show up in the mold. Let's scrub everything down. This will keep the two halves from sticking together when we do mold them together. Okay, now we build up our walls again. I'm building the walls a little higher this time because it is going to be a little thicker. Um, you generally want to go for about a half inch thickness when you're doing these molds. I find uh, to have that rigidness in the mold keeps them from warping. Okay, you know, I'll just speed up and go through the same thing with the combi flamer here. Same deal, put your channel back in, put the piece back in, and then brush her down with the Vaseline. Okay, uh, come back from pouring the other parts. You do that the exact same way. Just heat up your blob and uh, throw it in the top, press it down, throw it in the fridge for 10 minutes. Now, this is where it gets tricky because these they seem like they're really stuck together, but they're not. There's a barrier in between the two, and that's from the, 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 the petroleum jelly. Just take your time. Gently pull these apart because now is not the time to kind of damage a, pit, a bit. Okay, and we can see our base came out and... A little plug of plaster that he actually used to fill the bottom came perfectly out of there. Just pry that up and get that off there. Alrighty. And then we have two perfectly halved molds. You can see they fit together really perfect when you have those keys, so there's no mess around when you get to them. And we trim the flash off of the second half. I don't really think you need to do this. I just like it. It's a cleaner look. They, they're they easier to put away that way. They look nice and neat. Look at that. That one came apart really clean. and everything out of there and then before you cast with these I'd go and I would clean them up a bit uh, wash them out 
the first half does leave a little bit of clay on there so you do want to scrub most of that off there but yeah just inspect them as long as you did it right you they should look really good so far you could do a test cast to see how they're going to turn out but uh not much worries about that Okay, now I get out a Sharpie marker, and I've got a couple molds laying around, so I like to mark the halves so I know which one goes for what. Uh, especially if you're doing, like, uh, urban bases like I'm doing, because you're obviously not going to make a hundred of the same base. You're going to make a few different bases and then cast multiples of them. So you kind of want to mark them base one, base two, just so you can keep them in your in, in, organized in your head, because heaven forbid you put together two molds and you get a miscast, and it just looks horrible. All right, so now we're going to get some toothpicks, and we're on to the casting part here. Um, I'm using an old uh, lid off of just like a sour cream container or cottage cheese container. That's fine. Uh, we get back our toothbrush with our petroleum jelly again here. And the toothpicks we'll be using to mix up the, the resin um, and then the petroleum jellies to mold release. And then get a couple of rubber bands to strap the mold tabs together once you get the, the resin in. Okay, what I'm using for my resin is I've got this five minute two part epoxy that I bought at a dollar store for a buck twenty five. Uh, honestly, if it comes to the bases, I think I cast about eight or nine bases with that. Um, with something smaller like a combi flame or, or, or a weapon of such, uh, you probably get like 20 or 30 if you do it right. Okay, same thing, uh, we get the petroleum jelly on here and then we just we'll scrub the tar out of these. This time you want to really make sure it's smooth uh, and scrub the edges because the, the, this stuff is going to squirt out quite a bit and uh, get all over the place so you want to be able to be able to pick it off afterwards. I prep my other mold here too. It's a good idea because if you, it's your first time and you're doing um, this method, you might not be familiar with how much to make for each mold. So you might have a little bit of extra and it's good to have an extra mold handy and you can pour it in. Now, what I do is, uh, I'll tell you a bit about some of the changes I've made in the end of the video here. But uh, what I did at this point was uh, I would squirt out uh, what I thought would be the volume that it would take to fill that mold plus an extra 25 percent and you can see this stuff is crystal clear so it's it's really hard to see what you're doing um, you might want to use gloves at this point if you have sensitive hands uh, I have never had a problem with epoxy it's just really sticky messy stuff it'd work where it's someplace where it's ventilated too Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm adding a drop of food coloring just because this is crystal clear so I can see what I'm doing. You can use an ink too. Um, I think I do that for the second mold. I actually add a drop of ink into it. But one drop, that's all it takes. Um, and this will help you determine when you've got this completely mixed. So you want to stir it until you cannot see any weird stripes or it's... The color has got to be completely mixed. There, there, there won't be any uh, what's the word I'm looking for consistency there we go folks okay and then I just scoop it up and gently let it pour in you do not, you don't have much time it is a five minute set time on this so uh, try to be quick try not to be too quick you let it pour like this and and most of the bubbles will will rise out um, there's a couple tricks I've found that, that work better with the end, uh, such as pouring directly from a cup or container, um, but we'll talk about that in the end of the video. Okay, so we want to overflow that just a little bit, just a hair, like just so that it bubbles over what it's supposed to. And then we press our mold halves together, and then it should squirt out like everywhere. The, don't worry, that's not going to be a problem. This is just going to be your flash that you're going to have to clean off. I'm sure we've all done it with a miniature before, so... It's, it's not that bad. It's actually pretty reasonable to clean these up. I've seen f some resin models that are, that are way worse than what this comes out. And then strap your rubber band around it and just put it off to the side. 
Now we'll do the second one. And yep, added a drop of game ink this time. I found later on that uh, a drop of uh, acrylic paint actually works the best in the end, and I'll explain why at the end of the video. Now, oh, this is a two-part mold. You want to fill each half uh, of the mold like till they're overflowing because you want it to flow into all the details that you're going to have in each half. Now we just press those two together and squeeze until you see, you can see where the, the mold hole was there, it just squirts right out. I got a little bit extra on there, so I'm just cleaning up the blobs right now. And here we go, this is the next day. Um, just had another base I was working on there. So I'll show you some of the, the results. So that's the combi flamer that I pulled out from the night before. Actually looks pretty good. There's uh, one little part near the, the flamer end that got miscast, but not bad. There's a, And there's a couple small bubbles, but those can be filled easily. Now what I did is with this one, I added a drop of acrylic paint to it. And that really seems to um, firm this up quite a bit. And here you'll see me actually opening the mold. And this is a very delicate process. Take your time. Um, it's okay if the mold is still a little soft. And I'll explain that why in a minute here. Slowly pry those parts apart. You don't want to rip anything at this stage. It may bend while you're pulling it out. That's okay. This stuff can be reshaped with hot water. Or another trick I'll show you in a minute here. Okay. And here you can see what it comes like fresh out of the mold. There's, there's quite a bit of flash, but like I said, it comes off pretty quickly. You can see this stuff is still pretty flexible. Uh, the mold hasn't set 100%. So what, I'll, what I'm going to do, because it hasn't set, is I'm just going to put it right back in the mold. And let it sit for a while. But there you go. A little bit of uh, acrylic gray paint added to that. Uh, there'll be some good still photos at the end here. But yeah, you can already see, like, the rivets came out from the detail on that, the switches on the gun, little skulls, everything. Okay, so it is soft, so I'll put it back in the mold, and then I'll put my clamp on it. Not too much pressure, because you don't want to deform it, but just enough that it's going to actually cause it to kind of flow back into there. And here we go. I was just using acrylic gray primer from Vallejo Model Air. Um, just a drop of that added into it. Now, when I was casting bases, uh, this time, because I was getting bubbles, I put it in a cup and I actually mixed this stuff up. And if you stir it a little slower, you don't get so many bubbles. And if you also pour it in a very thin stream, it will flow into the molds a lot better. Um, there is a bit more waste because you are pouring and some of it will tend to stick in the pot, but... To get rid of the bubbles and have a finer mold in the end, I think it's worth it. And here you go. Here's the piece I cast with the gray. And you can see there's one, maybe two bubbles in there. Not bad. Actually, with the brickwork, that kind of works out. The base really shows it because that should be smooth. But you can see there's a few bubbles here and there. A light sand would get rid of those. And here's one of the uh, bases that I cast, and it's all painted up now, just so you can see. And the bubbles really don't affect the overall look too much. It actually looks pretty sharp. And this is the one uh, that I did with the, the red food coloring, and you can see there's one massive bubble there. Uh, luckily, um, I was able to go in afterwards and fill it with the green stuff. I left it at this point uh, because I did want you guys to be able to see... Uh, what can happen if, if you mix this stuff too quickly? Uh, yeah, like I said, just a little bit of like liquid green stuff or smooth surface filler and you're good to go. And here is our 
cast combi flamer on the bottom with our original bit on the top. I still have to clean the flash off, but pretty good. On to some still picks. Alright, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and as always, uh, any feedback you can leave in the comments below, and I will try to get back to all of them. And be a great help if everybody would like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more pictures, visit me on Facebook at Bits to Brush Crooks over there. And thank you very much.